Let me, let me ask one point that Rush was making here. To what extent I am, I'm livid as a conservative when I'm called a racist, because it's not true. I'm a Christian. Well, but I, I am livid at the characterization that if you're conservative, you don't care about African Americans, you don't care about Latinos, because that is the antithesis of how I was raised, who I am, and the way I was born. Can you think of a national forum prior to this one where this issue, where I think it is an institutional racism against African Americans that are, happen to be politically conservative, that are called the most vile names in a society that has moved way to the left on political yeah. correctness, mm -hmm. that it, it is still socially apparently acceptable to use the names that Deneen used and Starr yeah. used and, and others have been called in this room. Yeah. No, I no, can't no. think of one. No, this is, no, this, no, this we ignore them. We do ignore them. We, 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 are, we are ignoring these names. I don't think there's anybody in this room that sits around going, oh my gosh, they just called me an opera Thomas or they called me oh, an wait, if it's wrong to yeah. If it's wrong to be sure. racist, but, why isn't this wrong in well, society? That's is, my question, it, Reverend. And I, Sean, I, Sean, I, 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 Reverend Peterson, I see you back then, and we'll get to Carol. You know, I, I was a Democrat at one time, and as a young person, I had a lot of anger. And when I was told by the leadership that the Republican Party was a racist party against black people, I believed that lie because I had this anger. But once I was able to overcome, I looked at the different platforms and I realized that I identified with the Republican platform, so I became a Republican. We have to expect the name calling. We have to expect the tough time. I agree. Can but I just say one thing? Could, but and deal I, with I, it. I, I but deal with it. And I, let me just say, there's a, there are a lot of young black people who have been lied to about the Republican yes, Party. Yes. And so what we need to do, as we're doing at Bond and with South Central LAT Party, we are educating the people about the party because I didn't hear anything about good about the Republican Party while growing up. Right, so we got to educate the young. Reverend, I, I want to make sure that anybody that has any point of view uh, has the ability and right to speak out without experience what well, everybody in this room right. has experienced. Right. Sean, that, that's my point. Sean. Yeah, go ahead. Rick, well, Sean, Carol, go ahead. I promised you next. Yeah. I don't get to you. I promise. Right. What I see the name calling as a sign of how effective we are, yes. because we wouldn't be attacked if we weren't reaching people. You're a threat. And I find that in the African-American community, there's lots of support for conservative values and principles, and we just have to find a way to combat the lies of the Democrats. Yeah. And they're coming from an elitist small group. Ron, Ron Christie, the that, that why, why are 90 percent of the African-American vote, why does it always go Democrat? Why is it almost a given that it's going to remain Democrat? Because I don't... Well, you know, I have to tell you, I wrote a, I wrote a book on this two years ago called Acting White, The Curious History of a Racial Slur. Mm -hmm. And you can take this all the way back to Uncle Tom's Cabin, where the attributes of being a good character were very literate, very well-spoken. And now we've seen in the last 30 or so years that if you apply yourself, if you're African-American, if you study hard, if you work hard, somehow you're acting white and you're not authentically down with the struggle. You know, and that's exactly where we're going to in this country. And the ultimate irony, Sean, is this presidency was supposed to herald hope and change. We were supposed to a new era, but this administration has shamelessly played the race card to put down African-American conservatives at the extent of keeping power for no, themselves. It's interesting, because Dr. Carson, you, your story about your mother saying, no television, you're going to read a book a week, mm -hmm. both you and your brother, it transformed your life. You are the head of pediatric neurosurgery. And, 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 and there was yeah. a no excuse mentality. Yeah. That was important. But, you know, I, I just want to mention that there are some conservative black people like, like Armstrong Williams with a big uh, listenership. Uh, he just bought a couple of television stations. Uh, you know, these, more than me. <laughs> <laughs> these things are working. I know of a white uh, university president at a prestigious university who very soon is going to make a big speech about liberty, freedom of speech. Mm -hmm. So it is possible that maybe some of all this bad stuff is actually helping to turn the tide. Right. I, I think you're right. I promise everybody's going to be heard. We'll take a break. We'll come back up next. Open mic time. I'm going to turn.
John, when's the last time somebody questioned your whiteness mm. and told you because you're white, you need to, like, yeah. I don't know, pick up a six-pack, drive a pickup truck? I mean, I don't know. What do white people do? Sean, tell me. <laughs> but, but, no, I mean, this is really what this is about. And, 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 and worse. What's wait, worse than that is the fact that, that we're buying into it. Right. That's what's yeah. worse than that. If, if there was and no platform for this types of things to happen, then they wouldn't happen. If that group that sat yeah. in front of our current vice president when he said he's going to put y'all back in chains. Biden Said, they allowed that to happen, and, wait, and because wait, they created wait, that atmosphere for such. Really One segment. Go ahead. Jump in. I'm um, sure. Um, I actually went to a college in New Hampshire, which was predominantly a white college, and I recall one instance where I was in a classroom. It was myself and another African American female was in the classroom, and they, for some reason, were talking about affirmative action, and the other young lady wanted to say that she was in the college because of affirmative action, and I actually took a lot of offense to that, because that's trying to say that my education and my intelligence had absolutely nothing to do with getting accepted. You know what? That's and a judgment. That and, and that's bothers unfair. me, and it should, it should have bothered her. Yeah. And I don't know why a lot of people carry that and are looking for their 40 acres and a mule still mm -hmm. when that's, you know, get over it. That yeah. We got our 40 acres and a mule because look at where we are today, that we are able to be who we want to be and do what we want to do. Right. Very well said. Very well said. All right, we got it. Go ahead. Real I was going to say, you know, this, yeah. this lie that blacks cannot be racist is a lie. You look at the Congressional Black Caucus that will only allow black Democrats to join. You look at in law schools. I'm an attorney. When I was in law school and I protested against the Black Law Students Association because they did not want to let non-blacks in, and they and I said you were racist. They said, Oh no, we can't be racist because we don't have the power. So this is just you know a fraud. That's like that, Chris Matthews' definition. Exactly. Yeah. It's exactly. It's, a, it's a Chris I'll, Matthews. I'll it's about I'll power. Ask. And the fact of the matter is, we. I mean, from you know, we all come from different. We come from all different backgrounds. But I think we all have a similar story to Dr. Carson. That our parents mm -hmm. said, you want to, you want to make it in America. This is the land of opportunity. You get an education. You read. You write. You do the things you need to do to be successful. It wasn't you see, about you got to be the right kind of black racism, person. Right? Everybody in this room is a role model. Everybody. Racism into yeah. financial empowerment. The issue is not that these African Americans are racist. The issue is they're trying to hold on to their power because, to be honest with you, that's all they have in Congress. Right. If they go home, they're not going to get a job. So they want to hold on to. Every space and across the board. Well said, I'm yeah. sick and tired of this well miscarrying. Said. I wish every I wish everybody in this room was elected. Really. It'd be good for the country. All right, we gotta take a break. Our closing thoughts.